So it's makeover time, for Coty at least. The cosmetics maker is putting a fresh face, see what we did there, on its strategy in efforts to capture pent up consumer demand following, well, a pandemic driven slump across the beauty industry at large. Now, earlier I got to speak with the CEO, that's Sue Nabi, about the upcoming launch of Kim Kardashian's, of course, we've got to talk about it, new skincare line. We've been concentrating the work we're doing with Kim on almost a weekly basis, you know, I'm in contact with her the same way as the teams at Coty to make sure that this line of skincare that's called SKKN by Kim, and that's been called like this because, you know, she has a huge success with uh, the other business she owns, which is Skim. We know what, that's hugely popular worldwide. And she thought, we thought all together that a name that looked like Skim, which is SKKN, mm. that we asked people to pronounce Skin by Kim is going to be the next, I would say, uh, uh, stage of the business that she's she's creating and and I was really very happy to discover a woman who is aware of each and every trend in the skincare industry in the nutrition industry you know in the industry of beauty the wellness industry and as you can imagine where she lives she's probably uh, in front of the, the the latest and the newest trends of the beauty industry and this is clearly for us a very very clear positioning to make her brand become the brand where people who hear about trends, they can shop these trends immediately on our direct to consumer channel that will be opening with her as soon as the line is going to be launched. How does that weave in with, of course, the focus that you have on clean? And what I'm seeing is, as a female consumer who looks at Instagram, who looks at, well, the social media world, and perhaps sees the pushback that is now against perfection in some way that we recently had the push you know the concerns unveiled by a photo put on air put online by a friend of one of the kardashians that simply didn't seem to be in line with their perfect brand and was pulled down is there an issue that that might backfire at one day how are you seeing the mood change about perfection and makeup when it comes to the consumer I think consumers are always looking for all options. That's the only, I would say, lesson I learned from my 20-something uh, years into this industry. And the market is all about, you know, uh, sometimes it's trend towards naturality, sometimes it's a trend toward more sophistication, and it's a constant reinvention, in fact. And some years it's all about makeup, some years it's all about skincare. And again, the, the, the re that's the reason why we are concentrating on probably creating a lineup of skincare uh, products and formulations at the forefront, and you said it very truly, of the clean beauty, but also of the efficacy. At the end of the day, people who buy a serum want to buy it because it has the right concentration in vitamin C or hyaluronic acid or anything like this. So it's clearly where we want the conversation to be. It's all about what's inside the products rather than how shall I look or how do I look? You see what I mean? Beautiful skin is the basis to any kind of look. Either you want to stay bare or you want to add makeup on. So it's really in this direction that together, hand in hand with Kim, we are going, which is the direction in which I would say the beauty industry in America is going. It's really this diversity of looks. But one thing is common to all these looks is healthy, beautifully looking skin. Of course, the Kardashians are a force in terms of social media. And that makes me think of e-commerce and, and just digital front and center. How is that? How are you seeing that progress towards innovation there? How is Coty making strides and setting itself apart from the pack? Yeah, that's true that, again, having uh, uh, Kim and, of course, Kylie, her younger sister, uh, having a reach of almost 400 million followers, if you gather all the social media that they are on, this is, you know, at the level of power brands such as Nike or Starbucks. So you can imagine that this kind of reach is clearly an unavailable asset. And the idea is that we are going not only to start a conversation with these people, to, uh, to listen to them, to have feedbacks when we launch product, to correct what needs to be corrected, what's the next trend, what they are looking for. And this is honestly invaluable. Having a kind of captive audience, if I may say, is something very new to the beauty business. And this kind, I would, I would say, of brands that are influencer-led brands, but also expert-led brands, because for me, it's becoming more and more the same thing. People want to hear what's their point of view on what's next when it comes to taking care of your skin, what's next when it comes to your hair, or what's next when it comes to taking care of your body, whatever. So these are key assets on which we are building our direct-to-consumer channels, and of course, our e-commerce assets. Social listening, 
advocacy, all this kind of, you know, social commerce, all these kind of new things that we are seeing raising here and there in the world are going to be clearly part of the COTI, I would say, expertise for the upcoming months and years. Mm. China, a key focus for you. And it must be interesting, given you're such a global brand, and now to be really pushing into China, which has, you know, recovered. It's got through the pandemic faster than others. We're starting to see a real reopening of that economy. How, are, how have people changed in way that they buy makeup? Do they still want to go to the store? Do they want to try it on? Is it more about actually avoiding that, going direct online purchasing, just getting it through the letterbox or whatever means you receive your package? What are you learning from China towards the reopening that we now see in the US and, and slowly in Europe? Well, what we're seeing in China is that, you know, people are used to buy online prior to the pandemic. And again, this is continuing. And the recent launch of Gucci Beauty on Tmall, after having launched with Burberry Beauty on Tmall a few months ago, honestly, we've seen phenomenal results. Gucci Beauty on Tmall is ranked at the top four launch uh, new brand entering Tmall since 2018. This is great. You know, the growth of Gucci in, in, in China uh, for Coty is uh, phenomenal. And we are just starting to touch, I would say, the potential of this brand. Uh, in a country like China. But at the same time, people are continuing to shop in stores. But I think I wouldn't say that it's like before. Today, stores need to bring something that online doesn't bring. So really transforming our stores. And I don't know if you have seen how Gucci or Burberry look in mm. stores. It's, it's a kind of fairy tale. You see what I mean? We are not asking people to come and sit and try products. We are taking them into the world of Gucci, of Burberry, or other brands. And this is a big difference versus the past. You need to make sure your store is bringing something that has nothing to do with the online experience. And therefore, it has to be like visiting, I don't know, uh, 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 an exhibition or going to a place where you will be entertained, etc hearing you know uh, the BA is explaining to you how to use the new foundation how to use the concealer etc so it's again this omnichannel strategy that's been you know something very theoretical up to now is becoming a reality people are going to ask different things from the two channels of distribution and China is already uh, showing this to us how important will China be to you from a revenue perspective China, you, we intend to grow it as fast as possible and as big as possible. Today, China is small for Coty, 3%, and we intend to be at least at 10% uh, very quickly in the coming years, I would say. And again, you can imagine that by growing our very uh, strongly accretive business that we have in China, which is mainly a luxury-oriented business with our high-end fragrances, artisanal fragrances, prestige makeup, and of course, prestige skincare. This is going to help a lot in terms of mix to increase the gross margin of the company. And this will allow us to fuel support for the rest of the bets of the company.